Okay, so we um, have been married for eight years. This year, by God's grace, we've got three children. We live in Nottingham and um, we disciple people, we teach, we um, I guess pastor to some extent. And we're just people who love God and want to make his name known um, to as many people as we can by his grace. Amen. I concur with what my wife said and given what's going on in the world at the moment, I am very, very much sure that some people are wondering what people in our position are thinking and what we'd like to say. And that's what we're about to do tonight. So, uh, basic source. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Jimmy, and this is DJ. Okay. Um, we are based in Rugby in the Midlands. And this is just, we've been married three years. Um, well, we're <laughs> Kingdom Leaders based in the Midlands. Um, we're part of the King's Tribe Network and we lead um, a mission called The Response. Okay. Hi there. My name is Sho. I'm Mo. And uh, we are based in Kent. Mm -hmm. uh, we are leaders of our uh, community as well, the King's Tribe. <laughs> also mentioned um, our main passion really is just to, you know, just to love God with all of our hustle, mind and strength, um, to love our neighbours as we love ourselves and to make disciples according to the Great Commission. So that is our, our passion. Mm. Evening everyone, my name is Ify Alexis Lee. I am passionate about God's word. I love God, I love his people, based in London. And it's a privilege to be on this call to be able to share um, what the Lord has placed in my heart for such a time as this for the body of Christ. Hello everyone, my name is Olani and I'm part of the King Strap Network. I work together with a couple of King's men in the KSA Global Missions Operations. Um, basically what we do is to unite kingdom ambassadors across the globe to work together towards achieving just one agenda that is God's own agenda for us. Um, yeah, thank you. You're quick. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, I am Norm, sir. This is Luke. Um, I'm also Thelma, as Olumide likes to call me. So Norm, sir, Thelma. And uh, we, um, we lead a Kingdom Influence Organization. Uh, we've been um, co-pastoring uh, a church called Manor House uh, here in Wolverhampton, where we live. And um, yeah, as everyone, we're just passionate about God's word. Um, but also more importantly, leaders as well, raising leaders as well, and um, just strengthening other leaders in the body of Christ. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. So um, I think we're just gonna start by um, saying, you know, because um, now at least you know we know what everybody does and i think it's very important before we actually share what god is saying to us it's really good i always say to people for us to know who the person is and what they do in the kingdom of god so i really appreciate that guys um so now for starters um i will start with let me let me see your names with bk and your spouse um what 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 has God been saying to you guys in this season concerning what's happening around um, our communities and nation? Yeah, <clears throat> I think that's that's a good question. It's actually quite related to some of the things that we talked about at our Sunday meeting today. Um, if anything, I think one of the things that God has been laying on our hearts is, I guess, the fact that um, the real test is not the situation happening to us. The real test is actually what our response to the situation is. Um, and that there's supposed to be, we was, as a generation, we should have a posture, which is a posture of homage to God. Mm -hmm. And I, God has had to, like I was just saying, I was playing with words, and I said God has had to distract us from our distractions mm -hmm. and get us to a place where we pay more attention to what matters. 
Mm -hmm. I was using an illustration a few weeks ago of a pyramid. <laughs> so if you look at the pyramid of our lives and our existence as a generation, we put everything else on top and put God on the bottom. And I think God has had to rejig that pyramid, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. where everything else that matter, i.e. our jobs, our schools, our education, our degrees, don't actually mean anything anymore, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Your passport doesn't mean anything as much. You can't. Even if you can afford to travel first class, you can't. You can't travel at the moment. If you, if you drive the best car in the world right now, you can't drive that car. Um, and it, it's forced us to a place of actually recognizing that um, the only thing that matters now is God. Mm -hmm. But also, out of adversity will come a redemption. Does that make sense? So this is supposed to trigger a behavior. And <clears throat> unfortunately, if, that, if we didn't have that behavior before this situation, too bad. But this is another chance, another chance for us to come to God and repent, another chance for us to actually then begin to think differently. So hopefully, you know, going away from this situation, actually, we have a renewed passion and a renewed commitment to God as a generation. Yeah. But also, even when we look at, you know, the whole Christ Christian conversation, you know, taking us back to basics, like like Sho, Sho says, like going back to what's actually the baseline of what and the core of what um, our ministries should be, which is really to reveal the nature of sonship and reconcile men back to the Father. Mm -hmm. now, everything else outside of that is great, but not as important as what the core is. So it's, it's basically almost like a back to basic um, movement that God is actually building now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does your missus want to share anything? Um, no, I agree with everything you said. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, Ify. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, it's really it's really poignant that BK shared that because that's definitely what's been on my heart as well. I think this year has been, hmm, so far, I think so much of our society has been shaken up by deaths and now this pandemic. I think one of the things that caused me to really pause and reflect was the death of um, basketball legend Kobe Bryant um, and his daughter and the other people that were in that helicopter with them. And I just remember thinking that, wow, your money can't save you. Um, that when you die, you don't take your money, you don't take your um, legendary status to heaven with you. You don't take it to your afterlife with you. You don't take it to hell with you. Um, the money can't save you. They had the best kind of helicopter. Um, they weren't old. Um, they weren't, you know, ready for death as some of us count it. And I think then, you know, I guess this pandemic season has really caused me to think as well that actually God is really sobering the hearts of people to really understand that it rains the rain rains on the, the just and the unjust, so to speak. And that when it comes to these kinds of things, that it, it's not about your position, it's not about your title, it's not about how much money you have, it's not about the acclaim, it's not about how loved you are. Um, it's about how well we stand before our Lord and our Father and our Saviour. Um, and I think that sobriety of heart, I believe that God is positioning the body of Christ to really be a light in this time, to really speak to that sensitivity um, that we're seeing. There's a, gen a, a general sense of fear in the atmosphere, a general sense of anxiety that people are feeling. Um, when is this virus, for example, going to catch up to me and my household? Or what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with that? And one thing I can say in, the, in an environment that is heightened by anxiety, the Lord speaks and he desires to speak and he desires to calm um, and still the anxieties of men and then that then puts a, a burden a requirement on the body of Christ to truly be the light um, the Bible speaks about in Isaiah that the Gentiles will come to the rising of our lights and so in our neighborhoods amongst the people around us amongst the the family around us this is a really good time as hearts are sensitive to really begin to speak the word of the Lord um, I was reading somewhere that prayers or you know the Google people googling for prayers has increased drastically over in this period so people are searching for something Things, something that's transcendent, something that um, is deeper than their, their normal. People want something more. And now more than ever is the time where we can show people and point people to the something more. Um, and being just like the Samaritan woman that said, come and see a man that told me everything um, that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? This is our, our chance to point people to someone deeper, point people to the, the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ ultimately. Um, 
And so in this climate of sensitivity, it's our job to really leverage this for the body of Christ. It's our job to really leverage this um, to seeing souls saved um, and pointing out that, listen, you know, people are dying every single day. Death is a reality. Um, 10 out of 10 people will die should the Lord not tarry. That's the statistic. And, it, and it's very, it's fact. And it's not solely based on economic status. It's not solely based on class or race. Um, anything can happen at any given time to anyone. And are you ready for the reality of that? I think that question is, is a sobering one. Are you ready for the reality of death? Um, because you can... <laughs> you can amass all that you want to amass. You can live the kind of life that you want to build for yourself. But the truth is, death is something that is undeniable. Death is something that comes knocking. How ready are you for that? Um, and what happens after? What happens when you die? And really beginning to challenge um, challenge the ideals, challenge the ideas that people have held onto um, about reincarnation or whatever the case might be, and coming to the, the fact that the Bible says that God has appointed one time for man to die, after that is judgment. Um, and are we ready for that? And I believe that that's the word that God is really placing on people's hearts because the sensitivity is high. Are we ready for the reality of death? Are we ready for the reality um, that Jesus Christ is coming back soon? Are we ready to really speak um, in this climate of sensitivity is what I believe the Lord is really, really drawing our attention to as a body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Really powerful. Uh, Shaw and Mo. All right. Hi, everyone. Ify, BK, thank you so much for for sharing that. Um, I think one of the things that has been on my heart um, just in this season is that we cannot afford to lose the message. Um, we can't go through all of this and come out of this empty handed. Um, before this started, actually, I'd been learning a lot about authority and spiritual authority, particularly. Um, and one of the scriptures that stood out to me was Hebrews 4.16, where it speaks about coming boldly um, to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And I feel like that's very significant in this season because if we're expecting that God will birth his vision through us, then we need to make sure that we're vessels um, unto honor. And for that to happen, we need to come before his throne first for that sanctification to happen, first for him to be able to give us the mercy that we need because until we obtain that mercy, and this is what's always been hitting me, that until we obtain that mercy, we can't find the grace to help in time of need. So in this time of need, are we just coming to the Father? Because I've heard many people say, oh yeah, come boldly. Yeah, even in your sin, come boldly. But the truth is the pathway that leads to us coming to God's throne is a pathway of repentance. Us understanding that, listen, I am broken. I am flawed. I've not done things your way so far. I have been prideful. I have been arrogant and everything else that each person um will know they need to present before the Father, being able to bring that before him and then obtain the grace they need so that God can then birth through this season that which he has predestined. Um, I've been reminded of God's sovereignty a lot, so much more now than um, ever actually, that he is sovereign and that which he wants to do will happen. But we as his body, we as his people need to be positioned once again in that same place, that throne of grace. Um, so that what he has planned will actually happen, yeah. and we won't miss it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And um, you know, based on what Moses just said, I'm reminded of Matthew 25, where Jesus Christ was given the parables of the ten virgins, and five were ready and five were not. You know, and if you look at the verses, at uh, the chapters even before that, and cross reference that with Luke 21, he speaks of the last days. You know, they were asking Christ about how the kingdom will come. And Jesus didn't give them a specific date or anything, but he told them about being read. Then he said, Once you see these things happening, then you know that's, you know, that the, that, uh, the coming of the Lord is near, that you should raise your heads up and look because your, your salvation draws nigh. And, you know, he said that these things are just birth pains. And I mean, we're, we're you know, we're parents to two, two little ones. And I see my wife as well in the period where, you know, she had contractions and we knew that, okay, we need to prepare because the children, you know, the child is coming. So now that we're seeing all these things around us, it should point, it should be something, it should point to the fact that Jesus is coming soon. We must be ready for the return of Christ Jesus. You know, one of the things that, um, that I really felt strongly in this period is, you know, the sense of all is, you know, is, is, is seeing everybody coming together and just realizing that 
we've been crying out for a revival for a long time. Um, but I felt like I felt as if God has basically just spoken and everything is just shaken, basically. Mm-hmm. And we've been we have to, and we've actually been pushed back into a space where everything, you know, the foundation has to be laid. Church is no longer the building that you go to, you know, but it's actually it's actually, you know, church is we are the body of Christ ultimately, and that everything must start at the family level first. It must start at the family level. So we have, that means that now that we're isolated, we have, you know, the things that we, that we esteem for church, you know, the, the praise and worship must be fantastic. The preacher must be banging with his sermons, all of those things, the lights and all of those things, you know, the cars that you drive to impress people you don't really like at church, all those things have been scr- pushed aside. Yeah. There's no car to drive anywhere anymore. There's no building to go to anymore. There is, you know, there is no worship equipment to play anymore. It's taking it back home right now. And now we're at a place whereby we're, we have to actually even face our relatives at home that we may probably may not even uh, be on good terms with. We have to reconcile with them. You know, we have to hold hands and pray together now. We have to study the word of God together now. You know, we have to raise up our children right now. And in this season, I've been reading Exodus and uh, I, I looked at Exodus chapter 12 where he speaks to the Passover and verse 11 says, eat this food with urgency for this is the Lord's Passover. And I was reminded of what Christ Jesus said in John. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you, um, you know, you cannot be my disciple. I thought, well, in another, or in another way, I paraphrase, he said that this is, you know, you, you won't have life as a result. So for all of us, I think there's a responsibility for the fathers, for the husbands, for the men to make sure that we bring our families into that place whereby we can actually do, you know, live out the word of God in our homes and let there be, a, let, allow the Holy Spirit to, allow God to do his purging of the body by the power of his mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, by taking things back home and studying the word of God, praying together and letting, the, letting God manifest through our families. Because that's what God is that's what God is looking for. It's not about the ministry, the title, the worship, the music, the out, wherever. It's about a community of people re- coming up as one. Echad, which is the word used in the Hebrew. Echad, meaning one, right? Mm-hmm. Being one people that love God, that love people, that make disciples, that proclaim the God message to the world. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's, that's really deep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Um, I'll move to... Uh, Olayin, or Olani. <laughs> I hope I said it right. No, yeah. you didn't. <laughs> oh, God. Please, somebody help me. Olani. Olani. Yeah. Okay. Olani or Ni for short. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, you're, you're forgiven. You're pardoned. <clears throat> my, pol- my apologies. <laughs> yeah. So one scripture that has been on my mind ever since, <clears throat> and even before now is Romans 8, 19, and which says that the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestations of the sons of God. And uh, the question I've always asked myself, and which became really apparent in this season, is where are the sons of God? Um, in, in the place of response, are we responding to God? And I, I like the idea that so many Christians have been drawn to God into in the place of prayer. They want to pray more. Nations are praying and all that. But imagine God is praying to us right now. And that was a revelation that I got, you know, I got months ago. That imagine that the, the heavenly witness, you know, the scripture says that there's a cloud of witness up there showing us. Imagine that, you know, there's a flip side now and they're actually praying for us to do something because the, the scripture says that you know, the kingdom of God to be made manifest on earth. Thy kingdom come, let that will be done. He wants us to do his will here on earth. So the question that I want to ask in this season is, how are we Christians responding to this situation? This is a wake-up call for us to understand and see what God wants us to see. Are we responding in the right way? What have we been doing wrong? Is it just now that we're waking up to what we need to do as Christians? So number one, in the place of economy, where is our voice? So God, God doesn't just want us to have a voice. He wants us to be his voice in government, in politics, in healthcare, in decision-making. Very soon, they're going to be passing policies. They're going to be doing things that will affect our families, will affect everyone. But does God have a voice in government? Hmm. Does God have a representative that will be able to make decisions 
it, decisions that will affect our lives, decisions that will affect the life of our kids. So where is that voice? Mm. And that is not going to happen by just praying alone. And it's something that we need to intentionally build into our system that God needs us to be there. Like somebody, if he said, we need to shine our light. So God needs us to be in that position for him to rely on us, just like Daniel. Mm. So he relied on Daniel, he empowered him for such a time as then to liberate his people from a, stra a strange land. So in this day, where are the sons of God like Daniel? So where are the sons of God like David that God can count on to redeem his people in this, in this day and age? We're using Zoom right now. I, I mean, I'm a technical person. I come from a technological background. I don't know if this recording has been listened to, if it's been stored somewhere, or maybe some people are locked up somewhere and they're monitoring what these Christians are saying. What if tomorrow they block this thing? What if tomorrow we can't communicate to one another again? How are we going to communicate? How are we going to have community? Most of our people, they're losing jobs right now. Commonwealth, can we, so, can we provide for them? Can we ensure that nobody lacks anything in terms of provision without depending on the, the world system? How can we provide for these people? In those days, Paul was a tent maker. He made tents from the money. He was able to tend to the people of God. How can we ensure that no one is lacking, that everyone is well taken care of, that God's people are well looked after? Do we have commonwealth? And it's just, it's just a wake-up call, like, we need to wake up. Let's focus on the right things. I think we're looking at it in the wrong direction. Right now, it's like we're in the hands of government, like we can't do anything. You guys stay at home. Everyone is staying at home. If they say tomorrow you guys don't put, up, put, don't put on your phone, we won't do it. And that is it. So do we have a voice? Does God have a voice? That is the question I'm asking. And I think everyone, every Christian needs to ask themselves in this season that, am I the voice of God in my field, in my hospital, in my clinic? Am I the voice of God? Can I speak God's will? Can I do God's will in every area? I believe that God has kept us in every domain, whether in the domain of relationship, the domain of finances, the domain of healthcare, the domain of technology, to be his light, and to make his will established there. But how well have we done that? So this will make us take a step back. What are we doing? Do we need to reevaluate our priorities? Let's refocus. The next couple of years, if something is going to happen, even in the next couple of months, that we shake the entire world, are we going to stand? Mm. Where are we going to be? Mm. So, praise God. Yes, sir. Wow, that, that's really good. That's really good, sir. Thank you so much. Pastor Shepherds. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, uh, Pastor Luke. Um, I had planned to go first because I wanted not only everyone else to take the stage and sit back, but when you hear such charges come from everyone, you're stirred up. You are stirred up. And... I am stirred up in my spirit now that I, I could either pray about what everyone said, I could prophesy to agree with what everybody said, but I want to round up with what uh, Luke wants to ask us to say about what's happening in our generation, especially in this season. You'll notice that nobody gave much notice to the virus, not because we don't care people are dying, not because we don't care people are falling ill, not because we are ignorant of it, and not because we're saying things like, oh, God will take care of it, or we've spoken one word and that's that. You understand that in all situations, as every one of my brothers and sisters have said, we must always look to God. And I feel in looking to God, you must look at a worldview holistically and from the beginning to the end. So there, is, there are four words that I like to use a lot, and some people would have heard it before. Creation, the fall, redemption, and we're now in the state of waiting for consummation. I'll say it again. First, this world was created. And after the creation came the fall, which has put us in the position that we are. But thanks be to God, the Lamb of God was slain in the foundations of the world. And that brought about our redemption. And we are now waiting for consummation. And all of these things took a relationship to happen. In the place of creation, the Genesis account tells us that 
God created the heavens and the earth. Heavens there indicating it was just not the firmament above the earth, but it's the whole universe and the lunar systems. And we get to see that he says, let us. So it wasn't just God on his own. And we could have, Pastor Luke himself, Pastor Show, if he could have gone on their own platforms and said what we've all said tonight. And sometimes they will. But we're trying to send, first of all, the body of Christ a message that just as then the Godhead was active in creating, and just as then it took a relationship for there to be a fall, because Eve may have eaten, ate the fruit first, Adam joined in, and Eve didn't do it by herself. A cunning serpent led her to it. So all this time, relationships and groups of happenings and encounters are taking place for there to be something moving or shaking in our earth. And we now had the redemption, and it's quite apt that today we remember the resurrection of Christ today. And that sealed our redemption. Now we're in the place of, it has been the last stage since Jesus Christ left, and when he left and ascended and left the ascension gifts. And they're not only five. This isn't the time to go into the other threes and everything, but he left gifts for us to be able to carry on his work. And I end with this. Saints, please stop only looking at who may be your favorite Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Periscope, or whoever teacher or preacher. We may not call ourselves prophets or apostles or whatever, but here's what we want to do. Together we are saying we want to carry on that commission. Amen. And we want you saints to join with us. Whether you come and speak like this or your place is to pray or to speak in the year's time if he tarries. Because leave you me, he's coming. And if you don't have the mindset that he's coming, that we're coming to consummation, that we need to think that we need to repent, then we will go with the generation that missed out. And we do not want to miss out. So I do agree with my brothers and sisters on this call. We're standing together. We want God to not only use us, we're available for him. Right. Let's take the fight first as Christians, and then we can go, as Jude says, to snatch those out of the fire who are on their way to hell. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Pastor Kauf. Do I need to add? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, if you want me to this time, sure I will. I mean, I, I agree with, I mean, I couldn't have put it better myself. I um, completely agree, Dan. Um, in this season, as I've been seeking and praying, and God has just really been taking me to the story of um, Mary and Martha. And um, I've been getting like a picture in my mind where um, his bride has been like Martha in the seasons before where we've had the sense of pseudo productivity where we've had our events, we've had our, our light, our cameras, our action. And in doing that, it looks like we're moving. It looks like we're, we're doing something. But actually, um, as um, I think my brother BK said that he's distracting us from our distractions. So in seasons where it's looked like we've been productive, but actually not much has been going on because our focus has been on, um, you know, this is a gen generic statement, but on the wrong things, our focus has been on numbers our focus has been on, um, you know, how do I look? Our focus has been on ourselves. Am I good enough? And um, all of these things are distracting us from actually intimacy with God. And I do believe, as BK said, that God is distracting us from our distractions so that we can be like Mary, so that we can be, you know, Jesus said that she has chosen the better place, which is at his feet. And uh, my prayer in this season is that his church all of us, myself included, will choose the better place, which is at the feet of Jesus, where the, the instructions come. It's at the feet of Jesus where we're given that sense of direction. It's at the feet of Jesus where we can hear, as my brother Nee was saying, that we can hear. So how do we now begin to move into government? How do we now begin to move into, um, into education? How do we now begin to move into prison ministry, into places that are seen as you know, untouchable, or unreachable so um i do believe that god's saying to us in the season that we should be like mary get at his feet be still before him to hear the things that he's saying to us amen
Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Do you want to share? Yes, please. Um, <laughs> uh, for me, um, what I felt um, as I was praying and um, really asking um, the Holy Spirit about this season, um, I'll just share just one of the main scriptures is the famous scripture that um, we say as a church. Where is it again? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face. And I felt the Holy Spirit really say to me that we have been missing the first part of humbling ourselves. We've been running to praying and seeking, but we were not in the posture of humbleness. And as I uh, began to hear a lot of the prophecies that were now coming out, there was one particular one that was um, more on point um, that the, the prophet was saying a virus is coming. And this was in 2016 or 2017. And the question that quickly came to my spirit was, so if we heard as a church from 2016, why were we not specifically praying for that in particular? And the Holy Spirit said, because we were not humble or uh, I don't want to mention the minister's name, but in things that we, we have been taking as a body, I'm talking as a body now, parts of the scriptures that we wanted to run with that suited what we wanted to get out or what we wanted to do in that instant. And so even in, even in looking like we are praying or in looking like we are seeking God as a particular church, we were doing that for the sake of being seen to be doing. But if we were truly doing it from a posture of humbleness, half of the activities that, were, that have been going on would not have been going on. And so, um, like some of you have said, the um, things that we have been focusing on, if you're in a humble posture, you will not focus on those things. The things that we've been um, talking about uh, wanting, asking from God and uh, wanting to do. We've been focused on what our neighbor is doing rather than what God wants to do in us or through us as an individual. And I really felt like God was saying some people have been given instructions by God, but rather than following that instruction, you're wanting to do what your neighbor is doing so you can have what your neighbor is, has. And so that place of humbleness is where we really need to get back to, where we are literally hearing what God is saying and doing. Um, this is where I even got, um, this might be my personal thing, but um, when the government have been telling us, okay, do this, stay at home, do that. And I'm seeing some pastors still going in the church building. Someone mentioned earlier on that, this is the time to show, are we really the church or we've been wanting our building more than the actual church? And so when I've been seeing a lot of people still going in their church building, still asking the choir master to come to play the keyboard or that one to come and lead the prayer, I thought to myself, the same government that we want to listen to our God, we are showing them that we don't even listen to our God who is saying, listen to your um, leaders, listen to your prime ministers. Again, that place of humbleness. Why can't we humble ourselves and hear what the government is saying and listen to the instructions so that when we speak that said the Lord, they can actually say that, wow, this is the law that you listen to, that you obey. Okay, tell us what is he saying. But if one of the government or one of the, uh, let's say, um, government leaders were to say, uh, can I open a scripture for you? And can you explain to me what this means about listening to the authority of the land? And then talk about, okay, what have you been doing? Will it really show that we obey our Father? So that has been really playing up in my spirit that as a church, God wants us back to that posture of humbling ourselves before the Lord so that we get the totality and the sum total of everything that he wants for us. And especially in this season where we want the healing of the land, we will get it. And every other thing that we want after that, we will be in that place whereby God can look at us and say, here is my bride, here are my children, here are everything that you ask of me, I will give it on to you. Um, but yeah, I think I've gone over five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> give 10 minutes. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, guys. Um, so m most of the points that you all gave are so amazing. Um, but I was I was thinking about something that I wanted to ask each and every one of you. Just one minute. Um, with everything that God has been saying, what is it? What is the strategy? What do you think the strategy is? What do you think the position of the church is right now? What are we meant to do as a church and as a body? You know, I don't know who wants to go first. Just, you know, just share whatever you feel like in your heart. This is what you believe we should be doing as a church. Because I think as far as I'm concerned, they're going to resume parliament on the 21st of April. So we as a body, what should be our job in this season? Thank you for that question, um, Brother Luke. I think it's a very good one. Mm. Honestly, I think one of the things that has irked me in this season where we've been given this amazing blessing mm -hmm. of being able to stay home is that it seems as though believers are staying home, but with the hopes of, as um, Sister Nompson mentioned, you know, I just need my, my pastor to do this. You know, we're at home, but I need church to function a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. And so we have people that are, in their house with multiple other family members everyone's watching their individual pastor um, the individual pastor's message um you know having your own individual time of worship but there isn't even the alignment that says hold on this is a great opportunity that we have to empower the people within our households to really pick up the mantle of what church actually is which isn't a building it's a people and i remember i was really inspired by a lady on my instagram um, her mum put together a, a a service for for church <laughs> and she had like all of the siblings <laughs> um, doing a certain thing you know bible reading this person sermon this person prayers this person and they were just doing it that kind of way and I loved it it really made my heart smile and I just thought imagine if we had more leaders within the body of Christ empowering people empowering the heads of homes to really pick up the mantle of what it means to be the body of Christ right now what it means to actually fellowship in your home right now exactly how they were doing it in in the book of Acts when they were meeting from house to house and each one brought a psalm, a hymn, a spiritual song. It wasn't such that <laughs> we were all, everyone was waiting for one person to preach to us or one person to give us, lead us into a time of worship, but we came ready, we came prepared, knowing that I have something to offer. So um, one of the, the things that I offer to what I believe that as a body of Christ, we can be doing better right now is really empowering the family. Right now, outside of people that live in the home that you are in, you're not supposed to be fraternizing. You're not supposed to be meeting up with others. So what a great time to really get to the, to the grass, the brass tacks um, of what, church looks like which is it starts with a heart of a fellowship a heart of humility that says come let's study this word together let's become this word together um so we can be the body of christ ultimately it's not a place we go to um it's who we are inherently um we are the body that christ jesus died for um, and has redeemed yeah that's good that's good and just to um just to concur with what um if he's just said i couldn't agree um, anymore because um, it's really been, you know, hard in my heart um, the importance of what we can do um, in our families in this time. I think a lot of us are looking externally um, for answers. We're looking externally for the next move. But actually, um, it just dropped to my heart now that if this season is maximised, the children that I will be sending, if we do end up sending them back to school, the children I will be sending back to school will be completely different children because we've been given that opportunity to um, teach them the gospel. We've been given that opportunity to um, to maximize seasons of their life that we may not have had previously. So um, my my prayer would be that um, all of our eyes are open. We're not looking to our pastor to tell us what to do in this time, but we're we're building our altars in our family. We're um, we're teaching our children scriptures. We're um, spending time with our families. We're building bonds. We're opening scriptures together. We're doing Bible studies together because that's what really changes our society. It's not, you know, watching someone on screen for an hour, but it's the time that's cultivated in the word of God. And we would be sending back for those who have children or even those of us who go back out into workplaces, we would be going back out as arrows, um, you know, in the hands of God. So yeah, that's my heart as well, that we would maximize the season with our families and those who we're, you know, in immediate contact with. 
Yeah, maybe because it's on our screen. Maybe I should go now. I'll touch you behind what you just said. Uh, sorry, I think I'm echoing because of my phone or something. Let me find out. Sorry, you know, I'm not stopped. So, um, let's talk behind what Ify and Lola said. If we are to say this is what the body of Christ should be doing, it's true. We should take advantage of what we have. And I would, I'm not forcing pastors or ministers or leaders to do this, but create time so that families can be. And think to yourselves that once the lockdown stops, don't pile things back on again. Yeah. Use this time. A lot of people who know me, and it's not like I live in a big bubble, I live in my small bubble, but some who know me ask me, why do you do this and how do you do that? I said to them, I grew up with these things. As much as we enjoyed service on a Sunday and the, the, um, the uh, assembly that we went to didn't have weekly uh, meetings, and here's why. My parents took us to different people's houses, not every day, but often enough so that we could see the body of Christ was not just those who came to our assembly. So we kind of grew up living the Acts life. I know I'm few in this number, but it's possible. It's very possible. So I would plead to my fellow ministers and those who say they are prophets of this generation. It's always about the family and God's people. Don't give us so much that people are stuck watching the telly because this generation isn't like some of you who will go back and decode and be students of Berea and decode what you're saying. They'll just go back drained and tired from staring at a screen because it will make them tired. So yes, we want them to watch this, but we're telling them you might so said that again, please. Take this back to take this back to to unpack it and and do something with it. And if it means that this comes across your screen and it's saying you should watch it when when Pastor Luke and um, Men and Fire put this out, you might want to wait list it and watch it next week, so that you can actually get in the Bible for yourself. Because and I'm going to throw it to me next because these people are just going from one screen to another, to another, to another, to another, because that's what Netflix teaches them, Amazon Prime teaches them, Sky Sports teaches them. We are claiming to be oracles for God. Let's help them out. That would be my plea. Um, can I just say this is something that's just coming to my mind again, um, based on what um, Ethan Lord have said. I couldn't agree more. And one of the things that I believe um, that uh, I was, I should have said is part of what I said, but as believers being proactive rather than reactive, especially uh, when um, in, regards into, in regards to schools, that's one of the places or one of the areas where we have been so reactive. And one of my cries is that we will have so many believers that are filthy rich, as they say, that we will have our schools that instead of saying most people are, beca are homeschooling out of fear, not mm. because they want to, mm. but it's out of fear that I don't want my child to be taught this and that. So I would, I said to myself, imagine if we had so many options of Christian schools that even non-believers would want to come to because of the standard that they have to be forced to do what we do in order to stay in the school. So that's just one of the areas that uh, I believe that after all this is said and done, if we believers can rise up and take a stand and say, you know what, no longer would we just be reacting to what is happening in the world, but we actually are proactive. Like uh, my brother said, going into the government, how many Christians do we have in the House of Commons? When the laws are being passed, if we can have enough believers that say, you know what, hang on, can we, can we, can we, but because there hardly is any, we are forced to being um, to live out the way that they say. And now we are doing petition after petition after petition. But how much can that really change? So that's just one thing I believe that we need to come out of this with. Can we build our own, um, what's the word? Schools, institutions. Institutions, yeah. 
Um, fantastic. Um, just quickly, from my end, when you asked that question, one word that came to my mind was decentralization. And decentralization in the sense of, from the spiritual side and also from the government side, from the economy side and education side, like you mentioned, um, we need to start taking spiritual leadership and spiritual responsibility back to the family where God requires it. People, are, people have been used to depending on their pastors, their, their the geo for direction and, um, and instructions. Even as families, they do that. And the head of the family, which is the husband, is nowhere to be found. So right now, it needs to be decentralized. People, every family unit now needs to start taking responsibility. Number one, spiritually. Number two, in terms of education. Just like what um, our sister just said. Um, take responsibility for education. What, uh, what, what, is your, 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 what are your children being exposed to? Take responsibility for decision making. So that word just came to my decentralization. I don't know how it's going to apply in all these things, but I think it, it's making sense. But we need to go back to the family being the core of the kingdom. Once a family gets it right, every family here gets it right, then we can proudly say that, yes, the kingdom of God is being established on earth. Amen to that. I, I love everything that has been shared so far, and I can definitely say I agree. Um, one of the things that I'm passionate about personally is the family. Um, and whilst everyone's been speaking, there's two things that have come to mind. One is rebuilding um, the walls. Um, so everything about Nehemiah and him re pushing so right now if we see society as being broken and we understand that the families are the ones that are supposed to rebuild the walls that doesn't mean each family only doing their own thing but it means each family coming together to synergize to see what other families have and actually start to come together to build what we need to build because one person cannot do it one household cannot do it. Um, every household, every family is named after God. So we need to start to come together to actually rebuild the walls of society that God may get the glory. And the second thing that came to mind, and I was just saying to my husband, was the parable of the rich fool, um, who, when he had received so much, said to himself, do you know what? Now I have an abundance. I'm going to build bigger bonds for myself. And I'm going to, you know, now I'm going to be comfortable. And Lord said to him that night, you fool, tonight your soul is required of you. And I feel like in this season, there's so much that the families are being blessed with, but it's not something that we're just supposed to keep to ourselves. It's not something that we're just supposed to utilize for ourselves. It's okay, so now our children know this particular prayer. Why don't we bring other children in and let them actually talk so other people can learn about it? We've learned this new skill. How am I using this skill to bless someone? Oh, I'm not spending how, however much on my Oyster card or travel anymore. Am I keeping that money? Oh yeah, I've got extra savings. Or am I realizing that there is a family around that could need it? So I think in terms of strategy, one of the things we need to start to do um, as a body is start to get, get of ourselves, if I'm going to put it in the nicest way possible, get out of our own comfortable shells and start to look out for one another looking up for those, especially those in the household of faith, because that's where it starts. And then we will start to see the change in society. But the strategy of the enemy is to ensure that with everything that we've achieved, we stay in our shells and not utilize it. You can have a million pounds if it just sits in one account. It will continue to depreciate, actually, and it will never benefit anyone, not even ourselves. But the minute we start to understand that there's an investment that needs to be made, there's a commonwealth that needs to be built, then we can start to get the returns from that. Um, I'll close with this. I was reading a scripture the other day. I can't remember exactly where it was now. But it spoke about how we are being cultivated to bless people, essentially. So I'm wondering in this season, whether, God is, whether it is that God is cultivating through us, who will it bless? Or are we just going to keep it to ourselves and say, now I have, I'm going to build bigger bonds? Or are we going to come together and actually let God take the glory? So that's, that's it for me. Yeah, I think um, to jump on what Mo was saying about building walls, I think um, one of the most important things is that even in building, the foundations have to be deep. If, no, if there's no depth, then we're just wasting our time. 
Mm-hmm. So I think that in this season, the reason why God has taken away the things that we idolize and, you know, use as an excuse to not study the word and stay in close relationship with those who are our brethren in the body of Christ. Um, I just feel that, you know, those things have been taken away from us so that we can actually utilize that time and, and utilize that time well to build, to, to actually create, how can I put it, foundations. deeper foundations, basically. Yeah. So there must yeah. be great depth in everything. Um, if a building doesn't have, if a building has shallow foundation, when the wind blows, it's going to fall. It's gonna fall. Um, if you don't build great depth of relationship with your brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, when the time comes, okay, when there's no great depth in terms of teaching your children, not just singing, you know, the, you know, Moses, you know, stories of Noah's Ark and stuff, but actually teaching them the principles and the things of God, then, you know, we don't have to... You, you, you get my drift anyway. Uh, Deuteronomy chapters, Deuteronomy is a book that is, um, uh, the, the, the Hebrew name for that book means repetition. So these, these before they got into the promised land, they had to, you know, things had to be repeated to them so that they'll remember. Word, and Deuteronomy word, chapter word, six, word Deuteronomy chapter six says, you know, hear O Israel, the Lord, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Teach it to your children when you wake up, when you eat together, when you go out, when you come back in, when you eat, when you go to sleep. You know, these are the things that you should do all the day. So there must be great depth. And I'll just end with a few things I've written here. I said that even in building, the foundations must be deep. So let's build depth in this time. That's strategy number one. In line with that strategy, husbands and fathers need to take responsibility. Leave the football leagues because that's been postponed. The Olympics <laughs> have been postponed. If you don't know scripture, deeper relationships with men who fear God and know the word. Yes. Build one another up. Get into systems of accountability now. You need it now more than ever, yeah. right? That's number one. Number two, humble yourselves. When we look at the scriptures, Moses humbled himself. He says that Moses was the meekest man, okay? The Bible says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. When Abraham encountered God, he bowed. When Isaiah encountered God, he bowed. Every person that we know of in scripture had an encounter of some kind and they bowed. So we must humble change ourselves. Change your, heart's po- change your heart posture. Worship is not what you just sing on Sunday or, you know, singing along after a track on Spotify because there's no church now. But worship is actually a heart posture, bowing before the Lord. So we need to build depth in this time. We need to build depth. And Exodus 24 is very important. Just like one of the brothers said on this call, that there's the, there's uh, there's Mary and then there's um, Martha, that we need to move, we need to do away with the Martha the, the Martha Sister. thing, and now be like Mary sitting at the feet, feet of Jesus. And the key thing, Exodus 30, 24, you see that the Lord said to Moses, He said to him, "Bring up the bring up the leaders away from Israel from the camp." But then I want Moses to come up to me, and it was because he came up and went. He, because he came up to God, he went out with something, with the tablets. So if we really want to come out to do something, we must spend time and come up respond to God's call for us to come up to him to come out with something. Amen. Yeah, thank you for that. And I think just as everyone was speaking, um, one thing that was laid on my, on my heart really was just an opportunity for us to really um, focus on the things that unite us. I feel like as a body, um, a lot of our time has been spent on warring the war of, you know, you're different to me, you look different, you act different, you do this different, you, you know, and God is actually saying, why, why don't you look at the things that unite you? Why don't you start from that place? And that's where all these things that we're talking about can be built, because the longer we spend um, spending time on the things that separate us, we will continue to be separated. And I think about the body, you know, we talk about a lot about the analogy of the body and, you know, it has to come to a place where each part of the body recognizes each other before they then start to work together and start to do things together. But actually, if we're not recognizing each other, we're not uniting, we're not, you know, actually see, identifying each, each other, you know, identity is such a big thing um, that I think that we really need to go back to that basics of what things actually unite us. Let's start from there. And from there, we can build. From there, we can actually develop a, you know the sense of relationship that everyone's been talking about and we can do away with all the things that shouldn't be part of us but the longer that we focus on the things that are separating us unfortunately you know it's it's going to be a shame and a travesty that this season will come and go and we're going to be back to square one so I feel like for me really God is um, saying to me and saying to us that let's let's look at the things that unite us. let's recognize each other let's identify each other 
and then from there we can build on what, what needs to be built on. Amen. Thank you. Um, one of the things I feel like God is saying um, right now is <coughs> basically the construct of the church is going to change, will change, has to change. Um, and the church will no longer be an organization but a movement. And that's that's what it was always designed to be. So I feel like um, this crisis is going to birth leaders and real leaders, people who are going to stand and take intentional and decisive action. Um, the first place that we need to start from, if we really want to be a movement, is a place of prayer and intercession. And God is already building that tissue together. God is raising people across multiple networks. And we would need to find a way to come together and work together. And after praying, there would need to be intentional action. So there would probably be a bunch of people who devote their whole life to pray. All of us will pray, obviously, but some people will spearhead that movement. But then there will be a, a, a movement of people who will have wisdom from eternity because we know that our God transcends time to know what to do and how to do it. Um, so I think that coming together would be very powerful because the completeness of everything that God expects from us in the place of response is not just to hear his word. We've heard his word for over 100 years, more than that. And God is bringing us to a place where we, we see that the completeness of that response is action, if that makes sense. So enough of just sitting and listening to nice, deep sermons. We actually now need to start to act. Um, and that's just the challenge for all of us around the table now, to actually understand our place in this whole new setup, what that looks like. Not everybody would be able to pastor a church in the, in the old way that we've always done it. Does that make sense? Because God is going to scatter us and put us in different many different formations. And I think we should not be scared of that. We shouldn't be worried about what we built up so far and what we've amassed, if that makes sense. We should be way open to the new dimension that God is opening us to us so that we don't sort of just plateau. Amen. Whew, wow. This, this has been great, guys. Thank you so much. Um, there's a lot of information on this. Uh, personally, I'm going to go back and just listen to this. Um, just in conclusion, um, personally, I, there is nothing much to say um, because you guys have said it all. Um, you've given not just what God is saying, because I always say that sometimes prophets will come and say, God is saying this. But um, if, there, if there's no strategy, then that prophecy is just not going to be fulfilled at all. So I'm so glad that at least you have summed up, you know, what God has said, and then you have put uh, flesh to it by actually giving us and the other people that will be listening to this, the strategies. I love what a lot of you were saying about family. Uh, because um, it's something that I think we have seen most people are doing. Some people are actually not doing it. I don't know why, but um, I think by default, this should have pushed every person to actually say, you know what, I'm going to make sure that I establish my household. I'm going to put my house in order in this season. And you guys have, you have, you have, you have brought some, some great, great stuff right there that I personally am going to use as well in my own household. Um, in terms of just building a solid foundation as a father um, and as a husband in my house. So I just want to thank you guys. Um, lastly, uh, before we go, I'm just going to ask each and every person, Just we're just going to pray for 30 seconds. Is that okay with everybody? Before we go, just 30 seconds, each person, and just, just speak into these words that we've released. Let's can just, we do each couple maybe so that we can some people need to go say maybe one person from each okay um, all right that's yeah. fine one the person and then if you because she's in it on yeah okay all <laughs> right of course yeah okay that's that's fine let, let, let us just pray i don't know whoever wants to go first so that we can close okay so first and foremost before i do pray there's something that we didn't uh Perhaps not, I don't want to say not mention, but I want to make clear. We are not against the office of pastors or leaders still preaching God's word and people still being under leadership. I want to make that very clear because sometimes someone can hear part of this and run with it. It sounded like we were saying families need to rise up and not 
make use of leaders and their pastors and ministers. Not what we are saying. We're saying that if families follow through on what is being shared for them, it not only makes a leader or pastor's work easier, mm -hmm. but it makes us all into the formation we should have. Yeah. I want us to declare together that we will come into formation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's me. Or us. Amen. Sorry, our Lord, our God, we're praying that you grant us the grace to discern the body well, to discern what you are saying, what you are doing per time, Lord God, that we will be in the right alignment in all things in the name of Jesus. Father, open up our hearts to really receive your truth, that we will not be tossed to and thrown by every wave of doctrine in the name of Jesus, but that we'll be planted in you, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to stand firm on your word. Father, that we will know you and know the truth that you have brought to us, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we're praying that you work in us, oh God, a greater understanding in this time, that we'll know what we ought to be doing, we'll know what you are calling us to do, oh God, and that we'll fall into alignment. Father, that the Holy Spirit will work in us, O oh God, to unify us, to pull us together as a body, that we'll see things together, that we'll see things as you see them, O oh God. But you prayed, and Jesus prayed, Lord, that we might be one, just as Jesus and the Father are one, O oh God. Father, let that same unifying spirit and power be present amongst us as believers, Lord, that we will not be members of a body that are acting differently or doing our own things, but help us to discern the body in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God Almighty, for giving us this opportunity to actually come together and hear your word, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill us with your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Fill us with your spirit, O oh Lord. Your word says that, that you put it in us to will and to do according to your good pleasure, O oh God. Heavenly Father, you said through James that we should be doers of the word and not just mere hearers. Even the Lord Christ Jesus himself said that we should be just that we should actually be doers of the word. So, Heavenly Father, fill us in such a way, Lord, that, that we will do according to your pleasure in Jesus' mighty name. That will not just hear these words, oh Lord, that will not make an idol out of conviction and having to sit on the conviction to hear some deep things, oh Lord, but we will actually put to practice that which you have spoken in Jesus' name, that, that we'll be able to put to practice those things for your verses in Hebrews, that those who are mature are those by means of exercising the things, you know, uh, by which they have done, by, by exercising things, oh Lord, in such a way, Lord. So Heavenly Father, help us to put these things into in, into practice and exercise that we go into the fullness and maturity in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for your love and your faithfulness to the cross. Uh, thank you for our lives. Thank you for our journeys. Thank you for our journey together. Thank you for our future. Thank you for everything that you're doing through and with us. Uh, thank you for the anointing of God that is upon this conversation. Um, and thank you because it's not just going to die off a conversation. We thank you because your Holy Spirit will inspire us into action. Lord, we pray for grace to fall upon us, to be able to do as we have said in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you strengthen us within. And Lord, we pray that you bring men and women who think on this wavelength, men and women, that you have also inspired in the same way to come so that together we can continue to push your uh, agenda for our lives, for our nation, our cities, for our world in general, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray. Um, that you take away every obstacle and every barrier and everything that the enemy you can on will try to put in our way to stop us, put on our hearts. Lord, we pray that everything in the hearts um, for 
the body of Christ. We will be alive to see it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, Father, we just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Father, for the, the souls that are in this group, Father. And I just want to thank you, oh God, for the word that, that you have spoken to their hearts, God. I just want to thank you, Father God, for the wisdom that you have brought out, Father, through in the name of Jesus. And I just pray, Father, Lord of God, that um, this word that has came from this group, Father, will go far. I just pray, Father, that this word, Father, Lord of God, will not only minister to ourselves, but to each and every person that will listen to this broadcast in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Father, just pray, Father, Lord, for grace to go forth with this message. And I assign your angels, Father, Lord, to go forth before this broadcast in the name of Jesus. And I just pray, Father God, that let there be, Father, a transformation through this message through this teaching for this generation let them hear the truth and accept the truth we just pray for conviction oh god that is as the strategies has been, have been laid out god i just pray for conviction conviction of the truth conviction of the word in the name of jesus father we bless your holy name and i thank you for each and every person here today in jesus mighty name amen Amen. Amen. Amen.